Hello and thank you for joining us on The Spin Room. I'm your host, Ami Kaufman. Our two spin doctors today are the mayor of the West Bank settlement, Efrat, and the chief foreign envoy for the Council of Jewish Communities of Judea and Samaria, Oded Revivi, and the former director of Peace Now, Yariv Oppenheimer. Thank you very much for coming on the show. It's good to see you. Our pleasure. Our four topics of discussion today with our esteemed guests are Ariel Gold, the American Jew who was barred entry to Israel for supporting the BDS movement, will then tackle a new law that will bar left-wing NGOs from lecturing in Israeli schools. Afterwards, we'll discuss the humanitarian disaster in Gaza and who exactly is blocking aid to the Strip. And we'll end time willing with a new bill addressing the army draft, passing its first hurdle last night, a move that could lead to early elections in Israel. Okay, our first topic is BDS. Ariel Elise Gold, a Jewish-American boycott, divestment, and sanctions activist, was denied entry into Israel on Sunday by the Population and Immigration Authority upon landing at Ben Gurion Airport. The decision came following instructions from Interior Minister Arya Derry and the recommendation of the Strategic Affairs Minister Gilad Erdan. Erdan posted a message following the event on his Twitter account saying, We prevented Ariel Gold, an extreme boycott activist, from entering the country. Our policy is clear. Those who campaign towards boycotting Israel and come here in order to cause harm won't be allowed to enter the country. The rules have changed and Israel will not show restraint towards those who try to hurt it. Joining us now from Ithaca, New York, is Ariel Gold herself, the national co-director of Code Pink. Ariel, thank you very much for joining us here on The Spin Room today. Thanks so much for having me on. So uh, can you tell us again what exactly happened after you landed there at uh, Ben Gurion Airport on uh, Sunday, I believe it was? Well, the last time I was there, which was last summer, um, I was both physically assaulted and campaigned against by right, the right-wing Israeli settler movement, um, by fanatics uh, in the West Bank, including, as I said, a physical assault. And when I left the country, I was informed by the authorities that in order to re-enter, I would have to um, obtain permission in advance. And so I, I did that. I followed that process um, accurately and respectfully. I um, obtained a visa in advance from the uh, Israeli consulate in New York City. Um, I was coming to attend a course at Hebrew University. And uh, it was for that purpose that I had the visa. It was a one-year multiple entry visa. Um, however, when I arrived, uh, as you said, uh, it was recommended that I not be able to enter the country. So, so this, was a, this was a student? My visa was actually revoked. Yeah, so this was a student visa? Yes. And what was the course? I mean, how long was the course supposed to be? Uh, it was a close to four week course, which is how long I plan to stay. My children are right, uh, right now at uh, a Jewish uh, sleepaway summer camp in America, mm -hmm. um, a, a part of the URJ, Union for Reform Judaism, to which my family, myself, are members. And so that gives me, that gave me time to come yeah. and uh, travel yeah. and to attend the course. So besides the course, besides the study, were you planning on going to, to the West Bank and doing anything in the West Bank? Um, whether I had visited friends or not, I think is quite irrelevant to whether I had intentions to visit friends or not in the West Bank is, I think, quite irrelevant to uh, the visa that, that I rightfully um, obtained. And I want to point out that Erdogan, one of the quotes that he said about why I was being denied entry was that I had uh, filmed soldiers um, and said that uh, their actions were not in compliance with Jewish values um, and that occupation and repression are not Jewish values. And I stand by that. And what Erdogan was specifically referring to was what happened last summer uh, while I was there and I was in uh, Hebron in the West Bank. Yeah. And uh, yeah. a notoriously violent settler by the name of Anak Okay, well, wait a minute, Ariel. I don't, I just, I don't want to talk right now about what, what happened back then, but I do want to talk, you know, you, you are part of, of, of Code Pink, as I mentioned uh, in, in the intro. So, I mean, Code Pink was on a blacklist that was published by Israel, I believe it was back in January, that anyone who tries to enter from one of these organizations, be it Jewish Voice for Peace or people like you from Code Pink, would be barred entry. So, I can't, you can't say that you're really surprised. 
First of all, it didn't say that they would definitely be barred entry. Right after that blacklist was put out, uh, the two co-founders of Code Pink, uh, Medea Benjamin and Jody Evans, entered the country easily. Um, also, as I have said many times, I applied in advance for a visa and was granted that visa. So if there was a time to uh, decide to deny me, that would have been the time when I applied okay. at the consulate in New York City. Uh, our, our, my panelist here, Yariv Oppenheimer, the former director of Peace Now, wants to ask you a question. If, if go yeah, ahead. many questions, actually. Mm -hmm. I will try to do it short. <laughs> uh, first of all, are you against the occupation in the West Bank and Gaza, or are you against the idea of the state of Israel? I'm against the occupation in the West Bank and Gaza. I am opposed to um, any Israel laws and any Gaza, if you don't remember. that are contrary to human rights. I believe in full equality and freedom and dignity for all people. But do you support the right of Israel to exist as a state? Because many Israel absolutely exists as a state. I don't think that's in question here. The question is whether Palestinians have human rights. Do you consider to sue Israel for the harm that you, you lost money, you lost time? Do you think about that? Uh, that will be something I will discuss with my attorney. Okay. Um, what do you say, uh, Ariel, to the many Israelis who see BDS, uh, uh, the, the BDS movement, as an anti-Semitic movement, one which doesn't agree with the very existence of the Jewish state, because Code Pink kind of cooperates with the BDS movement, doesn't it? Well, if you look at the demands of uh, the uh, BDS movement, they're quite simple. They're really demands for human rights and international law. And I can't speak to the actions of all people who say they're acting on behalf of uh, BDS, but I can speak for so myself. So you admit that there, are anti that, that there are anti-Semites in the BDS movement? There are anti-Semites everywhere in the world. That, that's not in question. In fact, we're but you don't watching think, you don't think, Ariel, that the BDS movement particularly has, a BD, uh, has an anti-Semitic problem? Why, why does, my question is, why does uh, BDS attract so many anti-Semites? I wouldn't say that BDS attracts anti-Semites. Mm. I would say anti-Semitism is heavily on the rise right now, and I would uh, point to the Trump administration right here in America. I would point to my president, uh, Donald Trump, who after the, uh, the events in Charlottesville where neo-Nazis marched um, chanting blatantly anti-Semitic things, Jews will not replace us. Uh, my president, Donald Trump, said um, there were good people on both sides and yeah. defended the neo-Nazis. Okay, so wait, I would wait. point to rise in anti-Semitism around the okay. world and say that that is absolutely wanna, something that we need to address. I, I want to bring in uh, Oded. I want to bring in Oded. I mean, does, I, when you look at her, does she look like a dangerous person? She is an extremely <laughs> dangerous person. She's an extremely dangerous yeah, I, person? I, I, I can how so? Say, how? How so? If you go and look at what she writes, what she says, what she does, against the state of Israel regarding whether they're Jews in Judea and Samaria. She doesn't even remember that Israel is not occupying Gaza, but it's, all, but it's Gaza. all in one big scramble against the state of Israel. And the only thing I can say is that I'm so sorry that you gave us so much screen time because she doesn't deserve anything. She shouldn't be allowed on air. This, as is, far this as is a legitimate a, a position of many, by the way, also Israelis, that against, support against Israel, the state of Israel. But, but it's not she against the state of Israel. She doesn't support she the state of Israel. She said clearly that she is working against the occupation, you, you, not about the state of Israel. And she came well, to study here. So well, how you can come to is, study in a place that you are against the fact that it exists? Go, go and look. At Ask the, her whether she's against the uh, idea of the state of Israel. When, she said no. Okay, let me you answer. feed her and tell her what to answer, you get the answer with what you want. Go okay. and look on the website of acts that she does, and she's proud of doing them, and what she's doing against the state of okay. Israel, against the legitimacy her, of the state of Israel, and that's why have, she shouldn't be given go for, any time We have to go for a break, Ariel. 20 seconds before we go for a break, quickly. I'm a direct descendant of Rabbi Joseph Caro, and uh, the land and the, and the people are incredibly important to me, and my Judaism is incredibly important to me. All right, uh, we're going to go uh, for a commercial break, and we're going to continue with Yariv Oppenheimer, Oded Ravivi, and Ariel Gold when we come back in just a moment. Stay with us right here on The Spin Room for more on this topic.
Americans have simply lost trust in news media. What happened to the news? All I get is a daily serving they of lies. Do your job and just tell me I the news. I am overloaded with news that is useless. Give me the facts. Let me sort it. Where's the integrity? Why is the news so bad? I will never trust the media. Unflinching, opinionated. Weeknights, David Schuster and Shayna Estulin bring you analysis, interviews, and opinions that connect us to the Middle East and the world. Watch Crossroads weeknights starting at 6 p.m. Eastern, only on I-24 News. Spinning with Oded Ravivi and Yariv Oppenheimer, and joining us from Ithaca, New York, still is Ariel Gold, the BDS uh, activist Jewish American who was barred entry to Israel for her stances, for her uh, political uh, opinions. Uh, Ariel, I want to ask you something again. Um, if, if the United States knew of a foreign national who dedicated his life to exposing the evils of the United States, it would not give that person a visa, wouldn't it? Well, I want to say that let, let's all remember here that Israel claims to be a country for all Jews. It claims to be a safe haven for all Jews, except now it has become a capitulation to the extreme right. To but the you're, not, movement you're, you're not a citizen, uh, Ariel, you're not a citizen of the state. That might be my next step. Really? You will make, are you going to make Aliyah? I, I, it's a possibility. Really? You're thinking about it. Again, Israel claims to be a place where Jews should visit, where we should be encouraged to visit. Um, and criticism of the government is not anti-Jewish at all. First of all, I, I'm quite critical of the Israeli government. And I also want to contrast my criticism of the Israeli government with my uh, belief in, 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 in Jewish life and uh, my raising of my kids within Jewish community. Um, last summer, my, my son traveled to Israel with an American Jewish youth group. Um, my daughter is expected to do so next year. I don't think anybody could say that um, I am uh, against the Jewish people or looking to destroy the Jewish people. Do you have a plan to try to challenge the system again and to come back to Israel in the next few weeks or months? Or you are planning, as you said, to make Aliyah and to, do, to go all the way and to do it officially? Those are things I'll discuss with my attorneys. Mm, okay. Were you supposed to study in the, in which campus were you supposed to take the course? Uh, Hebrew University. It has two campuses, uh, which one? If you name them both for me, I'm terrible at pronunciation. Yes, that one. And have you checked like what's the land between Jerusalem and Mount Scopus? It's legal standard. Are you aware that you might have made just a, a statement by crossing over the green line to go and study a university which is not quite located in the old Jerusalem? Was that any importance for what you? Mean, what do you mean not quite located in the old Basically Jerusalem? Basically what he's saying, I'll translate it for you, the, the, that campus, Mount Scopus, is beyond the green line. It's in East Jerusalem. Yeah, in fact, if you took I, a course there, you would be, you would be, you would be uh, taking part in the occupation, which you oppose. That isn't taking part in the occupation any it's more than me having spent time in, it's in funding. Tehran, staying with I'm sure the BDS movement is against better, that campus. Better answer. Rights the previous summer is taking part in the occupation. I uh, pursue human rights for all people, for uh, Palestinians and for Israelis, and I consider it my responsibility as a Jew to help guide my people back on to a path of justice and righteousness because we have to answer someday for what we are doing right now for the crimes that we are either directly committing if we are israeli citizens or are complicit in if we are diaspora jews so is that something that you and maybe other bds activists are considering to maybe to, to make your 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 to, to, to make aliyah and to become citizens and make your uh, campaign more effective? Is that something that you and other activists uh, are thinking of? I, I can't speak to what other activists are thinking well, of. Well, I'm sure it's something that you might talk about between I yourselves. I can say that I am outraged at being denied entry 
and that I will be continuing to be an activist for Palestinian rights, okay. and that I will be contesting um, this denial. Okay. What are, what are the Palestinian rights? Uh, the same, what? The same, what are the Palestinian uh, like rights? The same rights when when you say free Palestine, no, when you say free Palestine, what does that mean for you? It means freedom for Palestinians. Palestinians right now do not have freedom of movement. According to um, what do not have many freedoms. Mm. Israel what? on a regular basis arrests around uh, 700 Palestinian children every year. Are These you, children are abused. Ariane, they you're ignoring my question. What are the borders that you're talking about? These are the kind of rights that I'm referring to. What are the borders are you, that you're talking about when you say free Palestine? Because you didn't say free Palestinians. You have a sign, free Palestine. And I want to know from you, at what borders are you and talking we'll about? And then wrap it up. Go ahead. I believe that Israel should act in accordance with international law and the internationally recognized borders. Okay. Uh, okay, Ariel Gold, we thank you very much for joining us from Ithaca, New York. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to continue uh, with our regular topics. Our next topic is somewhat connected. The uh, Breaking the Silence Law was approved this morning in the Education Committee for second and third readings by a majority of seven to five. The law states that organizations that allegedly operate against IDF soldiers, such as the left-wing NGO Breaking the Silence, and against the goals of state education, will not be able to enter school grounds and meet uh, with students. So, Yariv, it's kind of, you know, it's similar topics. If the state deems these organizations unpatriotic or harmful to the army or to Israel, they have, the state has the right to do that, doesn't it? It's not just the state, it's the government, the government that actually yes. legislates this, the laws and making this decision. And we have something in common of these two laws. And the, the thing in common is that people are trying to deny reality. People are trying to block their eyes about what's going on, to block their ears and not to listen to the criticism. We just heard a very clear uh, statement saying that Israel has the right to exist, but the Palestinian has the right to have their own state. Mm -hmm. And this is a legitimate opinion and we don't want to hear it we don't want to listen to it we don't want to know what's going on behind the scenes we look at the settlements and it looks very nice and quiet and fun but behind the scenes there is occupation and we are trying to avoid okay. ourselves Odette. from looking what? at like the people what? of breaking the silence are doing what, what, Odette, what about free speech hearing different voices critical voices sometimes what about that there's no problem for freedom of opinion freedom of speech expressing your opinions the problem with Ariel Gold, the problem with breaking, breaking the, the silence, silence, is that they're not just expressing their opinions. They're also activists in changing the reality by doing actions. As long as it was according only... According to the law. Uh, no, not always according to the law, but as long as it was just expressing opinions, it was fine. But when actions are being done against the state of Israel, against the organs of the state of Israel, harming the organs themselves, then, kind then of we have to start What kind of an action ourselves. breaking the silence are doing that are illegal or something that are harming the security of so, Israel? What breaking the silence okay, are doing? They're speaking out. Quite, be specific. What's when, the harm? When they start taking videos, when they do Photoshop, when they spread different ammunition... Breaking the silence does Photoshop? As far as I know, Part of the reason really? it part These of are the photoshops look at the pictures. These are real pictures of the occupation. This is how it looked like. It's not Photoshop. Well, this is not you occupation. Know, they, they, this they is look at the signs. This is freedom of speech of people demonstrating. Great, so why you want to block it? Why you want I, to say I, that I breaking the sign? I, I this is exactly what breaking the sign is no, doing. But what they as far and as you as want I to do it in Israel, live. in t in schools in Israel, not abroad. Because, so allow them. Because as far as I understand, there is a mixture between freedom of expression and bringing these organizations organizations into the school and becoming part of the curriculum and they shouldn't be active in the schools because we don't want any politics in the school. This is something different. I think that we do want politics and we have politicians getting into schools and some movement as well as long as it's balanced and you have all the no, opinions. As long as but it, what you are trying, what the government is doing here is aiming for uh, specifically breaking the silent, uh, silence, aiming okay, specifically anti-settlement activities. You, you're wrong. Politics are not allowed in schools. You can have a, a lecture about a citizenship, about how we, uh, the system runs, but people are not allowed to come and advocate, and especially, and especially not organizations who are calling for the destruction of the state they of are Israel. Not calling for the okay. destruction. These are soldiers that fight for Israel. How they can we call have, them we have for to, this destruction? We have to go for a commercial break. When we come back, more with Yariv Oppenheimer and Oded Ravivi. Stick around.
coffee, honey? Mm-hmm. Roku Express. Now 500,000 movies and TV episodes? This is the ultimate streaming adventure. Jack. Oh, great choice. Hey, where's my coffee? Our world is becoming increasingly connected. 6.5 million Wi-Fi enabled devices are now shipping every day and global consumer internet traffic is growing exponentially. We are creating breakthrough technologies that connect millions of people and billions of devices. And as we collaborate with the world's leading service and content providers, we're transforming the way billions of people connect to their digital world, securing our place as the most trusted business in technology. We are Eris and we're powering your digital world. to know the news fast and to the point and the in-depth interviews that will keep you in your seat from the people that you trust i24 news presents the new rundown co-hosted by nurit ben and kalev ben david only on i24 news Politics, economics, business, and technology. Get the real news and the real insight about what's happening around the world. Michelle McCory breaks down the top stories of the day from the Middle East to the U.S. Weeknights beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. We're back on the spin room with Oded Ravivi and Yariv Oppenheimer and moving on to our next topic that is Mahmoud Abbas. The Israeli Daily Haaretz is reporting today that Israel is showing willingness to alleviate the suffering in the Gaza Strip, but it is President, uh, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas who is the main obstacle to making that happen since his cooperation uh, is needed as well. Um, Oded, uh, Amos Arel, the military pundit in, in Haaretz who wrote this piece, said that despite the tough rhetoric by Israeli leaders, the past few weeks have seen a greater uh, readiness among them to advance projects that would ha- rehabilitate Gaza's infrastructure. Why, why do you think Israel reached this decision, and is it a good idea? We can't ignore what's happening behind the borders. We understand that at the end of the day, even if people in the international community put a lot of pressure on Israel to withdraw, like we did from the Gaza Strip, at the end of the day, it's areas of land which are hard to manage by themselves without cooperation. And therefore, a deal needs to be made about how to govern all the areas and how to deal with infrastructure and with natural resources. What's happening when you withdraw from Gaza, then all of a sudden you have a bomb which is going to explode because nobody is managing it. When suggested that we'll withdraw from the Judea and Samaria area, the same thing will happen until... Mahmoud Abbas is willing to sit, negotiate, and understand how we're going to deal with it. It's always going to be mm. a game of raising the flames and lowering the flames. Do, do you buy this, that it is basically Abbas is the, the largest stumbling block to make this happen? Or maybe this is an excuse that's being, uh, you know, kind of used by Israel to not make things go forward? Uh, first of all, I think that Abbas is not really uh, helpful in, the, in solving the problem with Gaza. Right. But I'm not so sure that Abbas is the address. Eventually, you got Hamas in Gaza, and you got the Israeli government actually talking with Hamas not for the first time, and I think that this is the right thing to do. You ask why we suddenly thinking about making the life in Gaza better? Only because of the demonstrations, only because of the kites. Without it, no one will care, we will not discuss about Gaza, we will not hear about Gaza. And the fact that the Gaza people went to this big demonstration, and even the kites that are making a huge harm, but are not, uh, uh, didn't kill even one Israeli, this is the proof that the people of Gaza understood that the best way to gain something is not by killing Israelis, but to protest against Israelis. But there are reports and that Hamas effective. is kind of interested, there are reports that Hamas is interested in, uh, in, 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 in more intense fighting in, in this summer. I, I, you were giggling a bit before about what you were saying. I'm giggling because, because I, I don't think the protest of the people in Gaza against Israel is what's moved the, the ship. No, look at, look at the last years. See that we ignore Gaza totally until the protest and the kites. We didn't ignore Gaza at all. We kept on bringing in supplies all the time into Gaza. We saw it at the end of the day when, with our supplies, the tunnels to attack us were built. At the end of the day, what I think has changed the Israeli approach is, again, the international community to say, here, we're doing what we can do, but if Hamas 
won't look after its people, won't stop being a corrupt organization, okay. nothing good will happen. You know, the people of Canada seconds. don't see Hamas as corrupt, and you cannot speak on their behalf. This right. is not the reality. I'm All sorry right. to no, I want to move on. face the truth. Ha Hamas they, is not do, they are not considered to be corrupt by the angels. Palestinian people. All right, well, I want to move on. We have a few more minutes left for our last topic of the day, that is Israeli politics. <laughs> Legislation addressing ultra-Orthodox military enlistment passed its first reading in the Knesset overnight. In the first of three readings, it must pass before becoming law. The bill sets minimum yearly targets for ultra-Orthodox conscription that, if not met, would result in financial sanctions on the yeshivas, or rabbinical seminaries, where they study. If the bill becomes law, the ultra-Orthodox sitting in the Netanyahu government have threatened to quit a move that could trigger early elections. Are we headed towards early elections? Is that how serious this uh, coalition crisis is? Or is it a little deja vu that you might have seen before? Listen, the coalition of last night is almost an unbelievable coalition. Yeah, in a strength, you mean? Or, oh, no, Yale 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 the, voting yes. for Netanyahu. First of all, and I just want to tell our viewers, Yair Lapid, the leader of the Yesh Atid party, is a leading opposition figure who joined forces with the government, as you mentioned. is very uh, uh, criticized by the opposition itself that, that he helped them out. Go ahead. And, and at the end of the day, I'm afraid that none of the politicians are really calling the problem as it is. There is no equality in military service. The percentages of kids reaching the age of 18 yeah. are dropping in taking part in uh, their military service in the IDF. The fact that they're picking on the Haredi community is merely to create headlines, merely because there is also an intention to bring them into the workforce, which is the major challenge. And everybody is playing games to see how they can carry on being in the government, pretending that they didn't uh, betray their morals and carry on working on us. Yeah, these spins are flying, but two it's major true. facts. Uh, should be uh, should be on the table. The first one, no Orthodox religious is going to come to the army because of this bill. It's not going to force anyone to join the army. Yeah. Second, Yair Lapid and the other people of, in the opposition, if they will have the chance to have a coalition with the Orthodox religious parties, they will sign exactly <laughs> the same bill. So it's all about speed. Did Yair Lapid betray the opposition? He did some, something that I think it's a bit bizarre because he actually helped Netanyahu to stabilize his coalition. I cannot understand the logic of that. However, again, if Yair Lapid tomorrow need to be prime minister and in order to, do a coal, to make yeah. coalition he needs the orthodox religious, he will sign exactly just, the same bill or even a better one for the orthodox religious. We're going religious. to show one of the recent polls showing that basically the prime minister uh, has no one, not even Yair Lapid, uh, 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 that's really threatening him. Why is no one on the left? Uh, capable of challenging the prime minister. We are waiting for Gantz, you know, the former head of <laughs> the, the former army, IDF chief of staff. For the new messiah. He's the only one, right, but he, he's not in the, in the game yet. What do you think? I think whether we like Netanyahu or not, there is nobody at his league that can manage to play all balls at the same time. Mm. Manage his house, manage the investigations, manage the party politics, international politics. None of the other candidates are at the same caliber, and that's why there's no competition. Netanyahu is a huge pot a credit in among the Israelis, including people also from the center and left. And I think that, that eventually the opposition to this government is about the issue that we discussed here today, about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, about yeah. security, about peace, about ideology. And when the left-wing opposition is hiding this issue, okay. Netanyahu is alone in the game. That is all the time we have. I want to thank our panelists, Yariv Oppenheimer and Oded Ravivi. Thank you very much. been a pleasure thank with you. you. Stay with us. We'll be right back with our weekly segment, Person of Interest, with senior Mideast Affairs correspondent, Mohamed al Qasim. Stick around. I-24 News. Fearless. Timely and always engaging. Every night, David Schuster brings the news from around the world to your front door. Watch Stateside, weeknights at 9 p.m. Eastern, only on I-24 News.